One other factor I'll throw in there is there's off-grid and then there's microgrids. And consider a microgrid as um, a community getting together and deciding to be off-grid. And if you have, just like if you had a garden in your backyard, if you have extra tomatoes but, but not enough peppers or something, you'd go trade. So the same thing goes with a microgrid where you're, um, you might have north or, sorry, more like west-facing solar panels and someone else has east-facing solar panels. So they might have, you know, different energy production throughout the day. So with a microgrid, it's the same as a utility, but instead of this mysterious grid that goes off into the giant city, it could be the 20 people um, that you live with if you're living, you know, in a more off-grid scenario. So actually, if, you know, there's different houses all in the same area that are all individually off-grid, that's very inefficient. Um, it'd be better if they could connect up to each other put on bi-directional meters and then share that energy when needed. So, yeah, I just want to, I just want to like, you know, um, explain a little bit more or just to explore a little bit more about when people are saying, you know, Paul, you're saying, is it, is it a choice for, you know, the, the oddball choice going off grid? I feel like most people, when people are associating oddball with off grid now, I think it's it's more. Keep in mind, I'm one of those oddballs. I'm one of those oddballs. Yeah. It's not a denigrative term or whatever. Yeah, yeah, but like I I, I feel like, but but it's true. It, it does exist. That stereotype does exist, and it's because um, when people are thinking off grid, they're thinking about like a really extreme lifestyle. Whereas what you're talking about right now, so an extreme lifestyle defined by going way far away from society, or just separate from society, like don't want to be a part of it, want to do your own thing, live your own lifestyle elsewhere. Whereas what we're really talking about now is, I mean, I could be off grid right in the middle of New York City if I wanted to be. I just wouldn't use any power exactly. from the from the utility. So, uh, you know, I, I feel like what we really need to do here is, is separate those two terms because, you know, off grid lifestyle in its stereotypical form is is weird to most people. But what, what I think what we're really talking about people, here, people equate it with isolation, and you're saying, yeah, we gotta we gotta tease those two things apart. And you're right, it, it's a false correlation. But go on. Yes, I'm a, I'm I'm an urban I'm an urban person living with a lot of other people in a community, very involved, like most people are in their communities. Except I choose to take a little bit more a uh, little bit more control over where my energy comes from. That's really what I think what we're talking about for off grid. I don't think like I yeah. feel like more so is it, it that's what's going to be the shift when people just start thinking about separating those two things like having two separate terms for those two things yeah we're not talking about churning butter and carrier pigeons um so hey, joe let's talk about microgrid because I, i've thought a lot about that and you're right it's extraordinarily inefficient you dump so much power when you're just a single system i've dumped probably in the years that i lived off grid i probably uh, dumped more power than I used, you know what I mean? Because I was gone for a couple of weeks and, uh, you know, I, yeah. I slept over my girlfriend's house or something. And then I'm just making all this juice. The batteries are at hundred percent. They're floating or whatever you guys call it. Um, and, uh, so it's ridiculous. That power should be going somewhere. And yet the grid is not always an option or the grid's being an asshole and they don't, they want to, they want to charge you 75 bucks a month, like in Arizona, uh, to just be a part of it, or they don't want to let you sell credits back. How approachable is this idea of people getting together and being like, okay, buddy, let's put a wire between me and your house. And now we're going to get Joe on there. And then Tommy wants in on it. Is that, is that pie in the sky or is that something that, you know, bros in a neighborhood can get together on is that is that something approachable or is this like oh no that's a three hundred thousand dollar investment we got to lay these cables that uh, we got to excavate this whole thing like is it is it just beyond the scope of the, of the average neighborhood or yeah so the funny thing is it, it's it's too hard to do right now like if the three of us wanted to have our microgrid and we lived a mile apart from each other it's just too hard we're basically trying to build our own utility so the fact that there's already a utility there and there's a lot of um, safety requirements and fed, you know state requirements based on how you transmit power and public space safety situations. Um, it's almost impossible right now unless you're li living off grid. Uh, but the funny thing is, when you go to places like Haiti, um, 
where um, in Guatemala, some other, like many other places that are doing off-grid systems and microgrids. Um, <clears throat> that's just what they do. So a project I did in, um, in Haiti is uh, on solar on a school, and then you connect up long power lines to a few other homes nearby, and then they have meters on them, and then they would pay with their, um, uh, with like their cell phone credits. So that's like their currency of how to pay for energy. And if they don't pay, the meter shuts them off. Um, and then if they have to go back and buy some more, and that's how they kind of finance the system. So the school um, became, becomes its own little utility company. Yeah, yeah, and um, there's this company called Spark Meter, um, or, or Spark, Spark Meter is the product. Uh, I went and visited their, uh, their village. They had, I think, um, like 600 homes attached to it, and they went to a town and just said, hey, we're gonna be a utility. We're just gonna create one. Um, another company, Segura Solar, um, they're based out of, I think, North Carolina, but also have a Haiti office. Um, they just went into a town and started hooking up meters and power lines and like, hey, we're, you know, we're, we're going to be a utility here and give you... Where, in America or in Haiti? Uh, they're doing that in Haiti. So what's the... So you're saying it is very doable, but it's there's very an impediment. Doable and, yeah, what's, so the, the, what's the impediment the is, to us doing it? Yeah, so the problem is like we live in Western society with, with lots of rules and lots of safety requirements and... The second you put a power line in, through a public space is like lawyers are jumping at you probably. But um, when you're in a place like Haiti, and not that they're doing things unsafe there, they're still following rules and working with the government there. It's just, it's easier to implement that because um, in some of those cases, they, they don't have anything at all. So the fact that they can get power lines up and get meters is, is amazing. So um, you could theoretically do the exact same thing in, in an off-grid community that doesn't have any uh, grid connection, you could, you know, connect up your houses and share power. And um, the Spark Meter is a product, it's like this big, probably costs a few hundred bucks, you put it on your wall, you run the power through it, and it tells you how much you're exiting the meter and how much is going into the meter. Holy right. fuck. This is, this is possible to do, like, in, uh, in an existing off-grid, or in, in, in an existing community that's privately owned, just... Uh, it doesn't have to be an off-grid community. They they could be grid tied, but but producing their own power via solar or wind or whatever, and just because it's not public public property, they can put up their own lines or excavate and bury their own lines and connect everything together. Then, yeah, I mean, first tidbit of of advice I'd give is um, follow all your local rules and standards and get an electrician pr approval, I mean, all, all, all those things. But um, theoretically, it's totally doable right now. If, if two neighbors in, uh, in Tau, New Mexico, want to share power and connect up, they totally could. Okay, um, Joe, Joe, you broke my heart, and then you, and then you, you healed it and put it back together yeah. again because you, you started, you, you should have prefaced your answer when you said, your first answer was, it's, it's essentially impossible right now. So you're saying it's very possible cost wise and 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 it's cost effective is what you're telling me that that whatever we'd have to add between our houses just a bunch of private property. private property private property private, pro private property okay let's say resident residential neighborhood you're saying whatever we have to invest in that it would actually make sense cost wise and the and the major impediment is the law is that am i understanding this correctly yes and um any public land, um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't trust anyone doing, you know, having power lines going through a public land, no matter how smart they are, because you don't. You don't know how it could be used. Someone could, um, you know, cut that cord and then electrify themselves. So if it's between two private properties, um, I'm sure there's a rule and a law that says you can't do that. Um, but if two people wanted to try it and they, you know, were uh, capable enough and they had took all the safety protocols, it's, it's possible. But I, I wouldn't you know, recommend it unless um, you've thoroughly researched it because that's something I haven't thoroughly researched, but it's something I've done in other countries. This seems I, like feel, a, I, I feel like, Paul, I feel like this has been done before though. Like in, and, and you said before, between two private properties, you just said, Joe, but I think the key is that the private properties have to be adjoined. 
um, butting up against the other. You're never passing on the public land. Or I feel like this has been done before in intentional communities where um, sure. where it, it's one big plot of land that's privately owned. Um, and you know the times that I've heard about it, it's been part of the original plan of the development where they do all this as part of the, you know, it, it, this, I know that for a fact that's not against the law to do because I ran my own power line from the pole on my own property myself. I buried that in a trench. And if I want to, if I wanted to like, or, you know what, this is actually, I'm actually probably the perfect person to actually implement this on my property. I have 15 acres and I have a line running half a mile in and I have a, 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 a transformer box pad already set up halfway down my road so that I can have another transformer and a stanchion and power other homes on the property. I have, I, I could, I have other areas. I could build like six houses on this property if I wanted to. So this is a perfect scenario where it's all my property. I'm allowed to bury my own electrical lines or run them up in the air if I want to. I can totally do that. I mean, obviously I'm gonna do everything to code like I did already with this line. I would get an electrician to like, you know, pull the permit to connect to the, you know, to do the whatever he, the part of it that he did, he actually wired up my stanchion and my electrical box and, 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 and connected to the pole, but, or he didn't actually connect to the pole. The power company connects to the pole, but he runs the, the wire up the pole, or maybe he did connect. I don't know. The point is, I know that's totally legal. If it's on private property, you're not passing into any public space. The Ridgefield microgrid. It's coming. There it is. I could have my own microgrid. Yeah. Joe, when do we get the book on off-grid solar coupled with uh, community microgrid? Oh, I don't know. Maybe that's the next one. That's got to be the sweet spot for a lot of people. That's got to. That, that's another little window here that's opening up. That there's got to be so many people that are like me and my buddy, and uh, you know, be, because of the cost advantage of micro of of having a microgrid, but you're still off grid, but you're just on grid with the people that you respect and know, and they're they're. It's not some power that be that you resent. I mean, that's got to be super. It's super appealing to me. I really like the idea of a microgrid. Um, the funny thing is it's, it's really easy. Like that's the easy part. Get the fuck out of here. I thought it was really hard. I thought it was going to like require all these big green boxes and, and, uh, and like power poles. And you have to understand, I'm like a five-year-old imagining these things. You're telling me it's like run a little wire, a little spark meter. And then at the end of the month you say, Hey, you owe 70 bucks. Dick. You Pretty much, yeah. 